Welcome back team. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the naming convention of tables. Here you can see the versions I'm using. So here you can see I have a database called MyDB. And inside of the MyDB folder set, I have a folder called tables. If I hit refresh, that will show me a list of tables and currently I do not have any. So let's take a look at our lesson plan. Our lesson plan is, I'm going to create a basic table name convention. I'm going to refresh this data object, and I'm going to talk about those tables, and then I'm going to drop them. Then I'm going to show you a smarter way to uh, name your tables, and we're going to refresh this object explorer. I'm going to talk about those tables, and then I will drop them. So let's begin. So I created some scripts just to create me some basic I'm going to execute this, and then I'm going to clear this off, so I'm going to have to look at that. And then I'm going to come over here and refresh. And here are my basic table names. This format is easy on the eyes, it's easy to understand, but this does not scale. Can you imagine I had 1,000 tables in here, and I was trying to find a special table that was kind of like a dependent on another table? Just a simple example is like, see all these location tables I have, like city, country, county, hmm, what else do they have? Oh, okay, state and zip code. Do you see how they're not organized inside of the tree? Well, that's one of the problems of this type of naming convention. There is no ordering. The second one is I don't really know where these tables begin. And what I mean by that is like, where is the the master tables and where's the detail tables and you know like one to many tables or the many to many tables or the transactional tables which which ones are they I, from the eye just looking at them I cannot tell now with a better naming convention when we get a new developer come in and we show them this type of system they're gonna be having to do a bunch of data exploring so what we're trying to do is make our data table naming convention more scalable so uh, more people will be able to use it in the future but once again these are not bad if we only have you know 15 20 30 tables this right here is not a bad naming convention but always we're going to start adding more tables so you say oh i'm only ever going to use 20 tables and that's not a real thing you're going to be adding tables in the future so let's drop these tables and let's go get a uh, a smarter one so so far i showed you the basic table naming convention it's just the name of the table i refreshed the object and uh, i've shown you that now i'm going to go drop all those objects so i'm going to say drop that basic and then i'm going to do refresh and they're all gone so the drop command removes tables is very dangerous so our next one is I'm going to create a smarter table name. And this table name is uh, scalable. And I'm going to come over here and do a refresh. And now you can see that the smarter table name convention, I've added two elements. I've added like a prefix and a suffix. So one at the beginning, one at the end. And I did that for two reasons. One. When I get a new developer come in there and I tell him, hey, I'm working on the uh, location website, he can easily come in there and see a set of tables that are for the location. I don't have to be smart and always explain stuff to this guy. So what we have here is I have grouped them with this prefix. And at the very end, the suffix tells me kind of like what kind of data is in this table. So the M stands for master table. That means that there is like a one row type master. An example for a country would be the United States. So I would not have the United States in this two times, three times, just one time. Uh, United Kingdom once, Ecuador once. But each country has many states. For instance, the United States has Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. So that would be a one-to-many relationship. Each state has many cities. 
Each state has many counties and each state has many zip codes. So now you can see this naming convention where we have a prefix and a very smart postfix that tells me the data type. So what I've shown you is a simple way to create tables with just the name and then a smarter way is by grouping and using this naming convention. In our next video, we're going to start learning about the data types to actually start making good tables.